plane had burst through the airport's perimeter fence, collided with a house just outside the airport, then hit a tree. 100 meters on, it smashed into an oil compound and a truck loaded with drums of fuel. The Lord Burley, which was carrying 1,000 gallons of fuel itself, slithered on for another 70 meters until coming to a standstill. And I started to crawl slightly upwards towards a piece of light. I looked out through the hole and I saw Bert Wally. And in the distance I saw the radio operator, a fellow called Rogers, Peter Howard, Ted Elliard, and the two Stuart S's. And they were running through the snow when they shouted, run, run, run. And I got out quickly. I got out down the side, and the side. It was, there wasn't anything on the right. So I got out there. And uh, I made a, a 20 hour. I never run so fast in my life when I went down there. I stood there, and just with that, the captain of the plane came around the side of the plane, a very, and I repeat, a very brave man. He had a tiny little fire extinguisher, which he would see in the car today, and he shouted to me, run your ship at bastard, it's going to explode. I think I was the only one who was in that position to be able to stop and look and see the whole picture. Oof. And I heard <clears throat> a baby crying. And I shouted to the people, come back, there's people alive in here. Harry Gregg uh, had appeared and was stood there with his arms out sh shouting, come on lads, come on lads, where are you all, where are you all? And I found the baby and I come out and I ran afterwards and the man Rogers was shouting, he came back to meet me. I gave him the baby and I found the mother, the mother found me and she was in a very, very bad way. And when I say I kicked her, kicked her in the middle of the back out through the aircraft. The crew and survivors would now battle together to help those that could be saved. I went back round inside again and I found Albert Scanlon and Ray Wood. I tried to pull them out and they were both trapped. They were dead as far as I was concerned. I came round what was left of the wing on that side of the plane and Bobby Charlton Bobby Charlton and Dennis File were lying half in, half out of where the six-seater car school would have been. But I was still fastened into my seat, and, and when, I, when I woke up, I thought I'd just opened my eyes. I thought I'd just closed my eyes, you know. And then afterwards, Harry, Harry and uh, Bill Folks said that I'd, uh, I'd been about a quarter of an hour. Matt Busby was quite, quite near to me, and he was sitting in a pool of water, and I, and I, I, I took my coat off, and because he... he he was obviously seriously injured, but I, um, but I, I thought, well, at, le at least you don't have to sit in a pool of water, you know. What was left of the aeroplane was a badly damaged cockpit, a small galley, and what we call, being clever now, the trailing edge of the wing. There was nothing else left. Yeah.